वेलकम गाइस इन द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ ट्यूटोरियल्स अबाउट डायबिटीज सिमुलेटर्स टाइप 2 डायबिटीज इज अ मेटाबॉलिक डिसऑर्डर इन व्हिच द बॉडी रिस्पोंस टू इंसुलिन इज रिड्यूस कॉल्ड अ इंसुलिन रेसिस्टेंस टाइप 2 डायबिटीज इज अ कंडीशंस कॉज्ड बाय इंसुलिन रेसिस्टेंस एंड डिक्रीज इन इंसुलिन सेक्रेशन रिजल्टिंग इन हाई ग्लूकोज लेवल्स मेनी सेल्स रिक्वायर्ड इंसुलिन फॉर ग्लूकोज अपटेक इन अदर वर्ड्स द इंसुलिन हेल्प्स टू ट्रांसपोर्ट ग्लूकोज फ्रॉम ब्लड एंड इनटू अवर सेल्स वंस इनसाइड द सेल ग्लूकोज कैन देन बी यूज्ड एज अ एनर्जी और फ्यूल फॉर द cells these things we have already discussed in our previous type 1 diabetes so without insulin glucose remains in the blood and blood glucose level increases so the elevated blood glucose levels along with the inability of a cells to take up glucose results in number of symptoms now let's talk the sign and symptoms of a type 2 diabetes so number 1 is a polyuria polyuria means increase the urine output increase urinary frequency polydipsia polyphagia unexplained weight loss blurred vision fatigue reoccurring urinary tract infections reoccurring skin infections reoccurring candida yeast infections we can say like that darkening of a skin around the neck groin and uh, axilla armpits we can say acanthosis nigricans parathyroidosis means a numbness burning sensation pickling uh, sensations or tingling sensations typically in hands leg or in feet slow healing of a cuts or sores so these are uh, important signs and symptoms of a type 2 diabetes let us type 2 diabetes typically has a slower onset than a type 1 diabetes with symptoms developing over a month to years whereas a type 1 symptoms develop within a days to weeks Now let's see the risk factor for a type 2 diabetes. There are both modifiable and non-modifiable risk factor for developing type 2 diabetes. Let's talk about our first type of a risk factor that is a modifiable risk factor that is a obese or overweight, low physical activity, unbalanced diet, pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes means higher than the normal blood sugar level but not enough to be a considered type 2 diabetes. Now we'll talk about a non-modifiable risk factor that is a family history of diabetes older than 45 years old. Uh, south asian africans hispanic american indians and caribbean ethnicity low birth weight previous pregnancy with a gestational diabetes history of polycystic ovary syndrome we can say other metabolic diseases also so whatever the modifiable risk factor listed above are a cause of a insulin resistance so the genetic inheritance of a type 2 diabetes is very good especially when the compared to type 1 diabetes a child who has one parents with a type 2 diabetes will have a 40% chances of a developing a type 2 diabetes so now we'll talk how does the insulin works okay once the beta cell of pancreas release insulin into the blood insulin binds to the insulin receptor on the surface of a body cells so the binding of insulin to the insulin receptor on a cell activates a signaling cascade which increase the recruitment of a glucose transporter that is a GLUT4 from intracellular storage vesicles to the plasma membrane you can see in the figure so GLUT4 is a major transporter responsible for uptake of a glucose from the blood stream into the cells so an increase in a GLUT4 glucose transporter at the plasma membrane will increase the glucose uptake into the cell the cell can and then use the glucose as an energy or fuel to carry out their functions now let's talk about uh, what are the causes of type 2 diabetes type 2 diabetes develops when the pancreatic beta cells secrete a less insulin than the body requires and the cells in the body stop responding to the insulin which is known as a insulin resistance in other word the type 2 diabetes is an insulin resistant condition which associated with a pancreatic beta cell dysfunctions so it is suggested insulin resistance can be caused by a metabolic syndrome like a high blood glucose level low level of high SDL high level of triglycerides high blood pressures and next is obesity adipose tissue promotes the insulin resistance through the inflammatory mechanisms and next causes is a lack of exercise poor diet genetics if we we'll see in genetics abnormal gene functioning can lead to insulin resistance or a pancreatic beta cell dysfunction now we'll talk about a pathophysiology both insulin resistance and inadequate insulin secretions must be present for a type 2 diabetes to occur So in type 2 diabetes the insulin receptors on a cell surface become resistant to insulin this means that glucose cannot be taken up into the cell from the blood stream it become deprived of our glucose and blood glucose level inappropriately rise so more simply the blood glucose is full of sugar but sugar cannot enter the cells due to the reduced insulin resistance and eventually overall lack of insulin to compensate for insulin resistance and to maintain normal glucose level the pancreatic beta cells 
will initially increase the insulin synthesis and release. The increase in insulin production and secretion is temporary fixed to overcome the lack of a sensitivity of insulin and allows the body cells to take off glucose. However, the increase in insulin production and secretion will eventually lead to accelerated beta cell changes or damage. Simply put the pancreatic beta cells tired out and do not make as much insulin. This will cause a subsequently decrease in insulin production and secretion. When the levels of uh, insulin secreted by beta cells are not enough to compensate for the lack of uh, sensitivity of insulin receptors, the patients will begin to experience symptoms of uh, diabetes. So let's talk the effects on the liver. The combination of insulin resistance and inadequate insulin secretion leads to a further increase in blood glucose levels by the liver. As insulin is not recognized by insulin receptors on the liver, the liver can no longer take uh, glucose off from the blood to store it. This causes the liver to inappropriately respond as if blood glucose level is low, resulting in an increased gluconeogenesis and a glycogenolysis. So let's talk about uh, what is gluconeogenesis. The formation of a glucose in liver is known as a gluconeogenesis and uh, the breakdown of a stored glycogen in liver release a glucose into the blood that is called glycogenolysis so both process increase the blood glucose level so this was the effect on the liver because of uh, insulin resistant now let's talk a diagnosis and test for type 2 diabetes so diagnosis of a type 2 diabetes involves measuring a blood glucose level through one of the following SbA1c fasting blood glucose test oral glucose tolerance test random blood glucose test patients with uh, symptoms of a diabetes may only require a one biochemical test to confirm their diagnosis of type 2 diabetes however patients with no symptoms typically require two separate investigations on different occasions both tests must have results with which confirm the diagnosis of type 2 diabetes the investigations and outcomes are shown as on table that you can see on my screen let's talk about a hemoglobin a1c or SbA1c test. SbA1c test is a simple blood test that measures the patient's average blood glucose level for the past two to three months. It measures the amount of glucose attached to the hemoglobin. SbA1c does not require the patients to fast. SbA1c level can be interpreted as a normal if it is less than 5.7 percent and pre-diabetes if it is between a 5.7 to 6.4 percent and diabetes if it is a higher on a two separate occasions that is about a 6.5 percent. SbA1c is affected by red blood cells turnover therefore should not be used diagnostically in patients who have pathologically affecting these cells such as a hemoglobinopathesis, hemolysis, ongoing iron deficiency anemia or HIV and most important thing is that SbA1c is not recommended in pregnant patients. Now let's talk about a fasting blood glucose test. A fasting blood glucose test is a blood test that takes the blood glucose level after having not consumed any food or drinks for at least eight hours prior to the test. Patients usually begin a fasting at midnight and have a blood test performed in the morning prior to breakfast. A fasting blood glucose level can be interpreted as a normal if it is less than 100 mg per deal and pre-diabetes if it's between a 100 to 125 mg per deal and diabetes if it is more than a 126 mg per deal. Now let's see about oral glucose tolerance test. The oral glucose tolerance test involves taking a fasting blood glucose level first followed by patients drinking on beverage containing 75 mg of glucose. The blood glucose is then measured again two hours after drinking the sugary beverage to analyze how the blood sugar level has changed. So this test is more commonly used for to test pregnant patients. A uh, two hours glucose level of a less than 140 mg per deal is recommended as a normal. If the range is between 140 to 199 mg per deal and it's said as a patient is having a pre-diabetes conditions and if it is a more than 200 mg per deal the patient is said to be a diabetes. Now let's talk about a random blood sugar test. A random blood glucose test is also known as a random plasma glucose test. It's a blood test that checks the blood sugar level at any random random time regardless of when last meal was taken. A patient is said to be diabetes if the range is about 200 mg per deal or 
higher. Let's talk about uh, some other tests for uh, type 2 diabetes. On investigation of type 2 diabetes, the patients should also have their lipid profile tested as a urine analysis performed to check for protein urea. If ketones are present in the urine, it may indicate the patient has a type 1 diabetes. Also, it is recommended to patients for a renal function test and liver function test for diagnosing of uh, diabetes. This was all about our type 2 diabetes. Thank you for watching this video.